Good morning. Welcome to the Pennington County Planning Commission meeting of January 24th, 2022. Um, recommendations of the Planning Commission on certain items from this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at their regular meeting on February 1st, 2022 at 10.30 a.m. The Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms, which are available in the Commission Chambers during the meeting. If you wish to speak on an item that's, and you're not the applicant or the applicant's agent, the, the speaker request forms are in the back of the room and you can give them to, to Jerry and she'll make sure I, I'm aware that you want, wish to speak. Roll call. Charlie. Here. 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 Sharon. Here. Michael. Here. Travis. Here. Okay, next item is approval of the January 10th, 2022 minutes. Are there corrections, changes, deletions? Madam Chair, move to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. And approval of today's agenda. Are there any changes? Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I would so move adoption. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Consent agenda. Good morning, Commissioners. Jason Thennison, Assistant Planning Director. Following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission on certain items for this agenda are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Agenda item number three is conditional use permit review 21-55. The applicants are David and Helene Weldon. To review, a live, to review living in an existing pole barn with living quarters while building a residence on the subject property. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 21-55 with conditions. Agenda item number four is minor plat 21-92 for Laura Henney and Eric Carlson of KTM Design Solutions to combine two lots and create lot 13R in block A of Edelweiss Mountain Development. Staff is recommending to approve minor plat 21-92 with conditions. Does anybody want to remove any items from the consent agenda? Madam Chair, yes. I'd like to remove number four. Okay. <clears throat> okay, do we have a motion to approve condition, or excuse me, consent agenda item number three? So moved. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> item number Katima, four. We don't really need to stretch this out. It's really simple. My problem with this is this particular application is doing everything to benefit the county. They're lowering density. They're taking a lot away from a dead end road that is a, a ser serious problem for our emergency services. And here we are asking them to go through the variance process on top of what they're already going through. Some way we have to look at including wording, and I was hoping Brittany would be here, that allows for uh, these folks when they're doing all positive things for the county not to go through one more process. I'm saying somehow waive the rule, do something that fits and helps these people do a better job and lightens the workload of both this commission and the county commissioners. Megan Kruger for the state's attorney's office. Sure. So we're working on revising some of our variance um, section in our ordinances. It's something that we can consider um, because it is, you know, it is kind of weird to think like Technically, it's still a variance because they're still over the 40 lot, even though they're condensing, um, which is why I believe that the planning department isn't planning on objecting to that request for the variance. But by our ordinance, the way it is now, they have to. 
Um, it's certainly something that we can consider as we're revising ordinances, but as it stands right now, that's the law. I understand that. I'm just saying, even listening to the last meeting, a citizen stood up and, and commented about the same thing when it becomes cumbersome upon the citizen. And, that, and I believe this sort of situation does. Based on that, I'd move to approve item number four. Second. Did we have a Zoom caller on item number four? No? Okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Item number five. Agenda item number five is conditional use permit 21-71 to live in a 12 by 56 foot worksite office trailer while building living quarters in the existing shop building located on the subject property. The applicant and landowner is Greg Helgeson. Location of the property is 13779 Ember Road. Property size is 10 acres, zoned agriculture district. Access is off Ember Road, and there's no special flood hazard area on the property. The zoning ordinance lists seven criteria the Planning Commission may consider in their review of conditional use permits. I'll read them to you, uh, starting with number one. The establishment, maintenance, or operation of the conditional use will not be de detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare. Staff found, yes, the requested use should not be detrimental to the or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public, especially considering the temporary nature of the applicant's request. Number two, the uses, values, and enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood for purposes already permitted may not be in any foreseeable manner substantially impaired or diminished by establishment, maintenance, or operation of the conditional use. Staff found, yes. The requested use should not have any long-term negative effects on the use or enjoyment of the properties in the immediate vicinity. The request is not intended to be a permanent use. Number three, that the establishment of the conditional use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. Staff found yes, the requested use should not affect the normal orderly development or improvement of any surrounding property in the area. Number four, that adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary site improvements be provided. Staff found yes. Access is off Ember Road. The existing worksite office trailer utilizes an existing on-site wastewater treatment system. Number five, adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestion in public streets. Staff found yes. The requested use should not significantly impact traffic congestion. Number six, that the conditional use will conform to all applicable regulations of the district in which it is located. The staff found yes. The property is zoned agriculture district living in a worksite office trailer while building living quarters in an existing structure is allowed with an approved conditional use permit. And lastly, number seven, that the conditional use is consistent with the adopted county comprehensive plan. Staff found yes. Future land use of the subject properties agriculture district allowing this conditional use permit is consistent with the current comprehensive plan. As the property sits today, there is a conditional use permit for a single wide mobile home on the property. It does contain an 80 by 70 foot garage that's permitted as well as a 12 by 56 Wisco trailer, which is also permitted and an on-site wastewater treatment system. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. No objections or concerns were received. Staff's analysis of the request uh, staff, re staff performed a site visit to review conditional use permit 21-15 and found the Wisco trailer on the property. The Wisco trailer does not meet conditions of approval of 20-15. The applicant was advised to bring the trailer into compliance uh, or apply for a conditional use permit amendment. That was in September. Sorry, got to keep the timeline in line. Uh, December of last year, the applicant applied for a conditional use permit amendment. January 19th of 2022, staff performed another site visit and found the existing Weisco worksite tra office trailer in a garage slash shop on the trailer or on the property. The address was posted on the trailer and at the end of the driveway. With that, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 21-71 with conditions. Other questions for staff? Comments from the public? Do you have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> All opposed? <clears throat> Number six. 
Agenda item number six is vacation of right of way VR 21 01 to vacate 170 feet of public right of way adjoining lot H in lot one and lot one of lot one of Bullender Place subdivision or Placer subdivision. The applicants are Albert and Marion Johnson. Their agent is DC Scott Surveyors. Location of the property is 13442 Rockwood Road. It is 1.07 acres, currently zoned rural residential district. It is vacant of any structures or utilities, and access is off Rockwood Drive. The applicants uh, are requesting to vacate a portion of right of way between lot one of one, uh, you can see here on the map, and lot H of lot one of Bullender Placer subdivision. It is currently zoned rural residential district. Uh, they did submit an exhibit, which is located here. I apologize, the north arrow is actually pointing left. You can see here, this is the portion of right of way being vacated. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. There were no concerns or objections received. Staff's analysis of the, re of the request is that this portion of platter right of way does not connect to any existing future right of way alignments. The lots affected by the vacation right of way have other legal access. Vacation of right of way will be absorbed equally by lot H of lot one and lot I of lot one. Staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request and recommends approval of vacation of right of way BR 21 01 with, with one condition. Are there questions for staff? Madam Chair. Yes. Jason, so that section line right away, does it go anywhere else or is it just that little portion? I mean, does it, I mean, I know we're talking about that little portion for this particular item, but. Um, does it extend one way or the other? No, it stops here at this property line. So it's just this uh, Rockwood road that comes down and kind of goes to the north here for 170 feet. That's the portion they're vacating. Uh, Sawmill Road provides access to this property here. How about further south? Is there further south? Does, no. Does it run? It doesn't even run south. No, it just goes north. Okay. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? So move. Okay. <clears throat> Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> number seven. Agenda item number seven is planned unit development overlay PU 21 21 to allow a planned unit development overlay for a recreational resort. <clears throat> The applicant is American Buffalo Resort LLC. Their agent is Peter Sorensen. The site location is 13752 South Highway 16. It is 34.98 acres, currently zoned Highway Service District. The existing use of the land is recreational resort. Access is off Highway South 16. And there's no special flood hazard area on the property. Zoning ordinance, the zoning ordinance lists the following standards and requirements that shall be a, shall apply in a PUD overlay district. There on the screen, I'll read staff's responses, starting with number one. Yes, the uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay conform to the uses by right or conditional uses permitted in a highway service zoning district. Number two, the uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay district are of a type and are located to minimize detrimental influence on surrounding properties. Number three. Yes, the use the uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay district meet the standards governing governing area, density, and off-street parking of a highway service district. Parking was calculated at one spot per guest bedroom slash campsite plus one spot for every two employees for a total of 145 required parking spots. Number four, yes, the proposed planned unit development overlay is 34.98 acres. Number five, yes, the proposed planned unit development overlay district is owned by American Buffalo Resort LLC, a member managed company. The business is in, is in good standing according to the South Dakota Secretary of State. Number six, yes, the uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay district are not des designed as to be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare. Number seven, Pennington County Zoning Ordinance Section 510 criteria are listed in this table on your screen right now. I will also read staff's responses to those, starting with number one. Staff found no. The uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay district should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public. Number two, 
No, the uses of planned unit development overlay district should not substantially impair or diminish the uses, values, or enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood for purposes already permitted. Number three, no, the uses of the proposed planned unit development overlay district should not impede the normal or and orderly development of improvement and or improvement of the surrounding properties for permit uses permitted in the district. Number four, yes. The proposed planned unit development overlay district contains adequate utilities, access, roads, drainage, and other site improvements. Number five, yes, the existing approach will provide ingress and egress as to minimize traffic congestion on South Highway 16. South Dakota Department of Transportation had no concerns with this request. Number six, yes, the requested use conforms to all applicable regulations of a highway service district with an approved planned unit development overlay district. Number seven, Yes, future land uses identified as highway services, uh, recreational slash tourism uses are consistent within, are a consistent use within this district. Uh, the property history, uh, the subject property has been utilized as a legal non-conforming recre recreational resort since the 1970s. There are uh, 37 structures on the property that are either on record with Department of Equalization or are permitted through our office. There's also one sign permit and nine on-site wastewater treatment systems with current operating permits. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. The County Emergency Services uh, had a couple comments stating that it looks like there will be two new structures and they recommend that they each receive their own separate physical address. And those addresses are assigned during the building permit process so any future structures that are added will be addressed at that time. Staff did note that a couple address points do need to be moved around based on their uses, and that is addressed as a condition of approval. Uh, Emergency Services also just suggested that County Fire sign off on their numbering plan for all the camping sites, cabins, pavilions, etc., and this is also included as a condition of approval. South Dakota Wildland Re Fire responded, stating that the app applicants have a permit on file, but it's expired. So renewing that or that renewing that permit is included as a condition of approval prior to operation. And the county environmental planner did state that the South Dakota Department of Agricultural and Natural Resources approved the existing on-site wastewater treatment systems, and there are no concerns noted. Staff's analysis of the request is that, again, the subject property has been utilized as a legal non-conforming recreational resort since the 1970s. The current owners, American Buffalo LLC, are proposing to expand operations to add 29 additional campsites. Therefore, the legal non-conforming status will be lost and the resort must now meet Pennington County Zoning Ordinance requirements. Approval of this request will bring the existing and proposed uses of the subject property into compliance with the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. And with that, staff recommends approval of Planned Unit Development Overlay 21-21 with conditions. And on the screen is a layout of the uh, campsite, basically as it sits today. Are Madam Chair. Questions for staff? Madam Chair. Jason, just a simple one, and it's kind of multi. What are the details on the new installation items to be installed on the property, and what site construction is involved, and does this all get handled during the building permit process? Right, so any structures will be permitted through our office. Uh, any kind of tent sites, that they plan to put in will be more or less just a light grading to improve the surface. Um, you can see here, this is the proposed, you know, what they're licensed for and what they have existing is here. So they have 101 existing RV slash tent sites and 24 cabins. Uh, what they're trying to get up to is adding that extra 29 RV slash tent sites. Uh, they've already got the 24 cabins. So I don't believe I just the, structures. I was looking at their overall and and the, and when I say overall I mean like the air uh, the overall air photo not the drawing so much and uh, it looked like there would be some road construction or whatnot and, and the amphitheater but as long as that's handled through the building permit process I don't have a problem with that especially the the move in the dirt. Right, yeah, so the aerial photos are pretty tricky to see through all the tree cover. Right. I did go out there and do a site visit, and all of the roads that are on this map exist right now. They do? Yeah, yeah. so okay. they'll just be adding some tent sites. Good, our thank you. Oops. Yep. Go ahead. Jason, <laughs> bring up the satellite photo, if you will. 
I've got a question. I said something to Charlie on this, but I want to make sure that I'm looking at it right. Okay, if you look at the, the drawing, the way it's set up, the whole front part of this Buffalo Resort is not within the, uh, the drawing. Right, I believe that this rapid map imagery is off. And that, yeah, I, that was one of the things that I noticed as well, uh, was this golf course looked like it was in the DOT right of way. That's why I specifically routed it to them to see if they had any comments or concerns and they had none. So it, it appears all of this is outside of the right of way and this line is probably not correct. Okay, well that, that was my only question. Just that Mike, would you let me weigh in on this? Jason, from years ago, um, Dances with Wolves had a significant request and a part of their property is on the state right of way and the state does have a, it written that they allowed that and I assumed, I assumed when I looked at this and it was over when they changed uh, Highway 16 to the four lanes. So that was what I remember from 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Comments from the public? Okay. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Number eight. Agenda item, no, agenda item number eight is conditional use permit amendment 15-09 to amend an existing conditional use permit and add one storage unit to the subject property. The applicant is Reno Gulch Storage LLC. The owners are Dan and, De Dan and Monica Detweiler. They're on the phone if you have any questions for them. Location is 24106 Highway 385. The property is 7.92 acres, currently zoned Highway Service District. <clears throat> Existing land use is commercial storage units. Access is provided off Highway 385, and there's no special flood hazard area on the property. Planning Commission did hear this item on January 10th of this year, uh, where the applicant was requesting to add four structures to this uh, conditional use permit. At that time, uh, with the ongoing situation with this section line, uh, pending outcome of an isolated track decision that needs to be made by the board, the applicant decided to amend this conditional use permit uh, application to only include this one single structure that is not included uh, in the section line or vacated section line. So with that, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 1509 with conditions. Madam Chair? Yes. Jason, you're the poor every, everything guy today. I can't believe it. <laughs> I, my, I would make a recommendation that on your condition number three that you do something to reference, and I put a quote like this, and I don't know where to put it in there, except isolated tract area uh, vacated right away in your item number three somewhere. Because the way it states right now that the addition of accessory structures shall be allowed through the issuance of building, I would, I guess I'd restrict it for my own protection, but that's what I would do. Okay. I don't know what the other commission members think of that, whether that's necessary or not. Is that a motion? Okay, I would move to uh, alter uh, condition three to include uh, properly placed uh, except isolated tract area of vacated right away. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll second it for discussion. So, okay. what are you trying to get at, Charlie? If you don't, I'm trying to say this so we don't approve this and get any heart carts in front of horses while the rest of the negotiations and whatever are going on. Our condition reads right now that if we approve this today, that the addition of accessory structures shall be allowed through the issuance of building permits, which include necessary site plans to be reviewed by the planning director. And I don't think we better leave that door open with our 
council and with board of commissioners. It, it's a simple thing. They only want the one building. This limits it to that one building. Thank you. Could you put structure, singular? Oh, condition number one, sir. Well, it doesn't say where it would be at. Right, yep, okay. we just have the site plan okay. that he submitted. You could just put it, that it has to be in accordance with the site plan. Um, the, I don't know if you have it designated for that particular building in red, um, but you could put in accordance with the site plan for the building that is outlined in red so that way they can only get a building permit for that specific location. Can I ask a question on that? Did they file a revised site plan or did we just put the red on it? That's just here, yep, yeah, because he changed these uh, labels. These okay. were proposed buildings before and now he's got them labeled as future buildings. Okay. And now this one is the only proposed building on this site plan. Not sure I disagree with that. I'm just trying to say I think we should limit that broad statement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Vote on the motion. All in favor? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say aye because I did it, but it, it's going to fail, right? I, I would say aye. Who seconded that? Me. Okay. Um, All you, opposed. I'm um, sorry. Point of order. We didn't get any comment from or ask for any comment. Or did we? Can I throw in, I would be in favor of altering it based upon our legal advice. Uh, the changing the word of the wording of the motion if the second will concur. In other words, to change it to read according to the uh, site plan uh, dated. Let's do the, use the dated. And that would be agreeable to that. I know what you're getting at, Charlie. Yeah, I'm just trying to limit it to what our advisor has asked us to do. But, but I do believe there's someone on the internet yes. that's, yeah. Mr. Detweiler, did you have a comment on yes. this amendment? We just, this well, was. I, I, I understand the concern, but I think the drawings and the application are perfectly clear. We're asking for um, approval of a single building. Um, it's a single building on the application. It's a single building on the drawing and it has no relationship to the dispute that's ongoing over the other three buildings. So um, I guess we just respectfully request that you um, approve the, the building we have in this application. Mr. Detweiler, I agree, except that the condition number three is a wide open door right now. It doesn't limit it to the one building. It says the addition of accessory structures shall be allowed through the issuance of building permits which include necessary site plans to be reviewed and approved by a planning director. It doesn't limit it to the one site plan with the one building. And if I could just suggest language so that way. Sure. Um, change condition number three, that the addition of accessory structures shall be allowed through the issue of building permits. Building permits must be in accordance with the site plans um, submitted as part of the application. I think that that would sure. you're okay close with that. that door. Yeah, you're tying it to this. Okay with that. Okay with that. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't have any problems with that. The motion and the Mr. second agreed to that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I, before we get too far into this, I noticed that um, on the agenda it says conditional use permit to add four storage units, and in here it says to add one storage unit. I just wanted to make sure those two agreed before it went to the newspaper. Okay, back to, Madam back to Chair, discussion on this idea. Okay, I'd move to approve per staff's recommendation. As amended, okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion? Mr. Detweiler, did you have anything else to say? Uh, no, nothing to add. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. okay. <coughs> All in favor say aye. Did I already aye. do that? All opposed, same, same sign. See, I told you not to give me complicated things today. <laughs> item number nine. Agenda <laughs> item number nine is conditional use permit 21-73 to allow a marijuana cultivation facility on the subject property. The applicants are Eminem Medical Solution, 
Timothy McMahon, and the, pat the property owner is Patrick Hall. Location of the property is approximately two miles south of the intersection of Old Folsom Road and South Highway 79. It is 40 acres, currently zoned heavy industrial district. It is vacant and access is from Highway 79 via easement and there's no special flood hazard area on the property. Uh, just a little property history before we get into this is that the property was rezoned uh, under rezone 18-09 uh, to rezone 560 acres from general commercial district general agriculture district and low, res low re density residential district to heavy industrial district and to amend the comprehensive plan to change the future land use from general commercial district, limited agriculture district and low density residential district to general commercial and district and heavy industrial district. And the board of commissioners <coughs> did approve that on January 15th of 2019. So we're in reviewing conditional use permits. The zoning ordinance lists seven factors the planning commission may consider in review of their condition conditional use permit applications, and they are on the screen. I'll read staff's responses, starting with number one. Staff found no, the requested use should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public. Number two, staff found no, the requested use should not be, sub should not substantially impair or diminish the uses, values, or enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood for purposes already permitted. Number three, staff found no, the requested use should not impede the normal an orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for the permitted for uses permitted in the district. Number four, yes, there is an existing road through an easement that will need to be improved to Ordinance 14 standards. In addition, the water right must a water right must be obtained from South Dakota Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources Water Management Board. Number five, yes, the existing approach is often existing or off of an easement that is accessed from Highway 79. The access road must be built to Ordinance 14 standards. Number six, yes, the current zoning district is heavy industrial district. The requested use will conform to all applicable regulations of the district if this conditional use permit is approved. Number seven, yes, future land use is identified as heavy industrial district. The requested use is consistent within the district with an approved conditional use permit. There are also criteria in section 326 of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance for a marijuana cultivation facility. They're on the screen. I can read staff's responses or you can review those as well. Overall, staff had no objections to it. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Uh, County Highway did respond stating that any road built within or along a section line must be built to Ordinance 14 standards for an industrial area, asphalt milling, as a surface will not be accepted. A layout plan showing access should be provided and any access easements should be platted or shown on an exhibit. And staff did include this as a condition of approval. County Natural Resources also responded stating that they must, the applicants must sign a, and submit a noxious weed and prairie dog management plan and this is also included as a condition of approval. South Dakota Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources uh, responded with a couple things. Uh, the first one is stating the environmental plan in the attachment states the plumbing system will consist of a well, water supplied storage tank located outside of the building, water supplied by a, a private well for this facility is a commercial use of water. Therefore, if a private well is to be used, a South Dakota water right permit will need to be obtained through the water rights program and Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Staff did um, add this as a condition of approval. Um, they also responded with uh, the Surface Water Quality Program has reviewed your request for comments letter based on the information provided. Um, the Surface Water Quality Program did provide comments, uh, nothing that required us to add conditions of approval for those comments though. Staff's analysis of the request is that on November 10th of 2021, the applicant submitted a pre-screening application in accordance with Pennington County Section 329 that was approved. The closest residential zoning, rural residential, is approximately 1,400 feet to the southeast of the subject property. The closest residential structure is approximately a half mile to the north. This conditional use permit request appears to be in harmony with surrounding zoning, of general commercial and heavy industrial zonings, zoning districts. The applicant has submitted sufficient information for the review of this conditional use permit. Further information regarding the actual structure, security, and business plans will be considered during the development plan review <clears throat> process and county licensing hearings. 
With that, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 21-73 with conditions. Questions for staff? I just have one question just for my own <clears throat> edification. How many applicants did we have for pre-screening on this cultivation thing? Uh, one so far. This was it, okay. Right. Other questions? Could you go out a little further? I've, I'm one of the people that live not too far as the crow flies, and I'm just, I know where this is, sort of. I just wanted to picture it on the field. I think it's about a mile and a half from you, two miles north of the area. It's north of that trap shooting. It's north of, how far north of the trap shooting area? That's right, right here. So trap shooting's right there along the bottom, Karen? Trap shoot's here. You should be able to see the line of the trap shooting right oh, there. okay. And then that's okay. the, yeah. Off the Folsom Road. Okay. The trap shooting. I, I don't know what the name of that road is. I just know where it's at. Right? Okay. Yeah, Old Folsom's over here, sir. Yeah, Old Folsom's over there. I can say I knew generally where it was, but I wanted it. It's, it's behind the property that used to have the racetrack on it. Maybe, right. Maybe you see some implements sitting out there now. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Other comments from the public? I have one question. Oh. Uh, okay. Who exactly owns the property? All right, we have two different names here. Right. So Pat Hall currently owns a property. I believe that there's a contingency on a deal that's been brokered that this conditional use permit be obtained, and then the deal will progress. Okay. I believe. <clears throat> Any other questions? And just for the commission's information, I believe the applicant and his attorney are here if you guys have any questions for them. That was a very, very thorough packet. Thank you very much. Provided a lot of information. Any comments from the public? <laughs> Is there a motion to approve? Deny? What? No move. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. May I make a comment? I sure hope the rest of them we review are as well prepared as yes. this particular one is. I would think you would feel the same, Jason. Has this been a, this is the first time through? Was it a struggle? Uh, oh, Brittany wrote the staff report, so all the credit goes to her, but yeah. Yeah, I think versus what we had run through us beforehand, I think this is well done yes. and accomplished. Good. Thank you. Thanks, staff. Okay. All right, item number 10, county board report. The board of commissioners will hear the planning commission's recommendations from their January 10th, 2022 planning or meeting on Tuesday, February 1st. Items from the public. Public just left. <laughs> yeah, they all left yeah, the room. I think they all ruled out. <laughs> Items from items from staff. No, we have a special planning commission meeting February 9th. Is that 5 p.m.? Did I yes. remember right from yes, the? Yes, that's for the Hard Rock Mining Ordinance. Okay, and oh. I have to go to Pier, but I'll be back that afternoon if I don't get run over by a truck. So. Okay. Items from the members. One, Madam Chair. Yes. Um. I just wanted to let you know, I did go through and tried to catch up with you folks uh, in your past meeting. And I did see some discussion that I thought should have happened on the uh, sub rigs. And I wanted to come forward to Brittany and she's not here. So I'm gonna wait until Wednesday or Thursday whenever she's back. But it's just mostly questions. I, I did serve on that committee and I believe Travis did too. And there was just a few questions from the final draft that I, I thought ought to go forward now. And, and I won't if you think it would be inappropriate of me to do so. 
and I can probably provide a little bit of enlightenment. So we're actually going to continue this at regs because there are some changes that need to be made um, from some other stuff that we found um, that just needs to be fixed um, from some legal research that I was doing. And then I was looking at the sub regs and looked at the new sub regs and realized that some language was not the best it could be. Um, so it's going to be continued indefinitely. So if you would like to let Brittany know of your comments, we're going to be making some changes anyway. So I thank you for that because there was two that just did not read right uh, uh, in there. So you are correct about the language. It just didn't read well, and there conducive was to, to working with it. Really, I mean, for me, there are some specific sections that I want to change. I right. don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm talking about the certifications aren't they're not illegal, but they're not necessarily in line with what state statute says, and I want them to say the same thing. Most of mine are clerical questions, so yeah. you're correct, Megan. Yeah, so just let Brittany know, and then we're making changes anyway, so. That answers my question, Madam Chair, and I will wait to deliver them to Brittany then. Okay. Last item on our agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye.